best known for her Emmy-nominated role as Sally Rogers on The Dick Van Dyke Show, the Broadway and television actress Rose Marie died at the age of 94. And anyone who saw her work in the 20s knows and had quite the interesting career outside of her most well-known roles. Not sure who Rose Marie is? Watch this video to the end to find out. Smash the red button to subscribe and the bell button to get notified of our new videos. Early Life In Manhattan, New York on August 15, 1923, to Italian-American vaudeville actor Frank Mazzetta, who went by the name of Frank Curley, and Polish-American Stella Kluszak. Growing up, she was regularly taken by her mother to see local vaudeville shows, a show she would later sing for their neighbors, who eventually entered her in a talent contest. At the age of three, Rose Marie became a singing sensation with the voice of Sophie Tucker, earning an enthusiastic fan base that would soon include Al Capone and Bugsy Siegel. She had a deep, gravelly voice, even as a child. She had a distinctive and deep voice for a child, which caught on with listeners of a radio show. But many fans, and those who saw her on stage or in the film, did not believe she was a child, instead of believing her to be an adult little person. To dispel the rumors, following her radio show, NBC sent her on the road at age seven to prove to listeners that she was indeed a child. Life in the Casino as she entered adulthood, Rose Marie turned to nightclub and lounge performances, where she was assisted in her career by many members of organized crime, including Al Capone and Bugsy Siegel. To survive, Rose Marie secured work at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, which was built by Siegel. Because of the Flamingo's organized crime ties, she had to seek permission to perform in other casinos and remained loyal to the boys at the Flamingo for the rest of her life. Concurrently with her nightclub work, the young adult Rose Marie continued to work in radio earning the nickname Darling of the Airwaves. She then performed at the first luxury casino club in Las Vegas, becoming a headline in the city for years. Following that, she went on to Broadway, then made a return to movies, and then moved on to TV. Her first record got featured at age five, in 1929, the five-year-old singer made a Vitaphone sound short titled Baby Rosemarie the Child Wonder. Between 1930 and 1938, she made 17 recordings, three of which were not issued. Her first issued record, recorded on March 10, 1932, featured accompaniment by Fletcher Henderson's band, one of the leading African-American jazz orchestras of the day. Henderson and the band were said to be in the RCA Victor Studios, recording the four songs they were intending to produce that day, and were asked to accompany Baby Rose Marie, reading from a stock arrangement. Her recording of Say That You Were Teasing Me, backed with Take a Picture of the Moon, Victor 22960, also featured Henderson's orchestra and was a national hit in 1932. According to Joel Whitburn, Rose Marie was the last surviving entertainer to have charted such a hit before World War II. She was in show business for 91 years. Rose Marie was hardly new to Hollywood when she became part of The Dick Van Dyke Show. She had been working since 1926 when she was just three years old, and her career has been called the longest in the business. Then called Baby Rose Marie, she even sang on her own NBC radio show at the age of five, before Shirley Temple was even born. She also starred in short films as a child. She dropped the name Baby from her name at age 11 and continued her career as Rose Marie, becoming a headliner at nightclubs across the country when she was a teenager. She was the first celebrity to not use her last name. We now have Cher, Madonna, and Beyonce, but before the latter two were even born, Rose Marie was dropping her last name. According to Vulture, when a Hollywood agent asked her what name she went by after she moved to California in the 1950s, she said she had always been simply Rose Marie. She didn't see a reason to change it just because she was going to be on television. First of all, I was baby Rose Marie, she told Vanity Fair. As I grew older into the awkward age, I became Miss Rosemary. And as I got older, I said, the hell with Miss, just make it Rosemary. 
She was reportedly the last person alive who knew mobster Al Capone. Before her death, Rosemary was reportedly the last person alive who knew and was close to mobster Al Capone. When she was around 10 or 11, Capone invited Rosemary and her father to his house for dinner, saying the boys wanted to meet her. Al Capone was known to her as Uncle Al. Al Capone picked me up in his arms and said, anything you want and anything you need, you let Uncle Al know, and you can call me Uncle Al from now on, she told the New York Post. She says she did indeed need a favor for him a couple of times. My father worked as an arsonist for Al Capone, she told People. He used to burn down your warehouse if things weren't going the right way, but I didn't know that at the time. I was a child star, and to me, Al was my Uncle Al. My mother used to cook for all these guys. Years later, when I was working in Vegas with casino owner and known mobster Bugsy Siegel, I cooked for that generation. I guess I knew then. She was the first celebrity to speak out about the Harvey Weinstein scandal. While filming the 1954 film Top Banana, Rosemarie says she was harassed by a male producer, and when she fired back, all of her scenes were cut to a minute. It was like I wasn't in the picture, she told Vulture. Speaking her mind on Twitter on August 10th, 2017, she tweeted, I've worked there since I was three, now I'm 94. Weinstein, finally women are speaking up to power. I have suffered my whole life for that. Won't stop. Relationship When it was time to get engaged, Rosemarie was married to trumpeter Bobby Guy from 1946 until he died in 1964. The couple had one daughter, Georgiana Guy Rodriguez, who became a television producer. Rosemarie died on December 28, 2017 at her home in Van Nuys, California of natural causes at the age of 94. Later Works before passing on, Rosemarie was active on social media, particularly developing a following on Twitter, where she offered support for women who, like her, had suffered from harassment. Her contemporaries and modern performers offered their remembrances and condolences on the same platform. Nell Scoville called her the patron saint of female comedy writers. And that is it on the list. Find this video interesting? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed what you just watched, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and hit the subscribe button for more interesting videos.